The next thing we're going to talk about today is the acute dilation of the right ventricle and what those findings can look like. So just like with everything, the more we see normal, the more we get our brains and our heads wrapped around what normal looks like, then abnormal findings will pop out at us and be obvious. So here are a couple of views, personal long axis view. We see this kind of big, massive right ventricle that's compressing on the left. And I want to point out to know that this is not a false positive and that we have a true personal long axis view, what we see is is most of the length of the left ventricle, we see the mitral valve and the aortic root. So that tells us that we're slicing the ventricle along the correct axis. Sometimes if your probe kind of drifts pointing too much towards the feet, then that brings the right ventricle into view and can falsely make it look prominent. But if we know, if we can see the mitral valve, the aortic root, most of the length of the left ventricle, and the right ventricle still looks big, then it is probably truly dilated. Here's our apical four chamber view. And again, to tell ourselves that this is an appropriate view, from the apical four chamber position. We can see the pretty much the full length of the left ventricle. We can see the full length of the left atrium and the mitral valve. So that tells us we're pretty much in the right plane. And in this correct plane, the right ventricle is massively dilated. And knowing that we're in the right plane gives us the clue that this is a true finding and not just a aberration of kind of the tilt or the position of the probe, which can happen sometimes. But if we see the full length of the left ventricle and the left atrium and the mitral valve is in view, sometimes I'll even do a little rotation to make sure I'm seeing the left ventricle at its widest point. If those are correct and the right ventricle looks dilated, then it's probably a true finding. We always want to confirm from multiple views. But this may happen in an acute PE, and that's probably the most important reason that we want to see this. There are other findings. Patients who are admitted with ARDS or pneumonia may also develop right ventricular failure, or maybe they have pre-existing right ventricular failure, so that's going to make their hemodynamic management a little more tricky. So this is always an important finding to recognize, one, for acute PE, but also in managing some of these sicker patients. Further findings, so again, compressed left ventricle, dilated right ventricle. We're seeing all four chambers, so we know this is a good view. Over here, we see the full length of the left ventricle, left atrium, and the mitral valve, and yet the right ventricle here is dilated and compressed. Now, I'll point out here, the right atrium is also dilated, so that's a little clue that this may be a chronic process and not an acute process, which just like everything else, got to be clinicians about this and recognize that even if we're thinking, oh, this is a dilated right ventricle from an acute PE, there could be other reasons and we have to be clinicians about it. In the short axis view, we want to make sure that we're getting a true cross section of the left ventricle. So we see the symmetric appearance of the mitral valve or the papillary muscles. If we see that, we see the right ventricle is dilated like it is here. Sometimes we can see the D sign. These are markers of elevated filling pressures and or volumes in the right ventricle, which may indicate an acute massive or submassive PE. But don't forget it could be chronic. I like to point out that sometimes this is a finding that can be seen on CT as well with a PE, although it's not as reliable as it is on echocardiogram, but here's the D sign on a CT scan as well. This patient had PE with markers of right ventricular dysfunction, and that may influence our decision as far as thrombolytics and things like that. The other thing that you can look for that may give you a clue is distension of the IVC. Remember, this is similar to tamponade, and this is actually a case of tamponade, but increased right atrial pressure, right ventricular pressure from an acute pulmonary embolism is going to dilate your IVC and distend it as well. So if that's what you can get a good view of, look at the IVC, it'll give you a clue. And if the IVC is small and collapsing, then they don't have high right atrial pressure. Just like we talked about with left ventricular failure, we've got to be clinicians about this and incorporate the whole clinical picture. People can have chronic right ventricular dilation. I will say in the population I see here in West Virginia, most of the time when I see a dilated right ventricle, it's a chronic finding, not an acute finding. So we have to be careful and be clinicians about what we're doing. If we're thinking it is an acute PE and we're thinking about pushing thrombolytics because maybe they're too unstable or they can't get a CT scan right away, we can add to that diagnosis by looking for source clots. They're usually their legs, but if they've got like a pick line or something, maybe in their arms. So we can help ourselves if we're going towards a TPA decision without true confirmation of a PE diagnosis by looking for source clots. If we see what we think is acute RV dilation and source clot in the legs or maybe the arms, then that can lend credence to a decision to give TPA empirically. This just brings us back to one of the cases we talked about at the beginning of this, our 49-year-old female with chest pressure, dyspnea on exertion, should also mention troponin was a little bit elevated, so this was kind of clinically looking like a non-STEMI acute coronary syndrome. This patient looked well at rest, there were no real findings on EKG, went ahead, took a look to assess the LV function and things, and recognized, oh, 
ventricle. That's a dilated right ventricle, which then led to this patient getting a CT for pulmonary embolism, which was not planned at first, and making the correct diagnosis and avoiding the diagnostic error of acute coronary syndrome. This patient was having PE with some markers of right ventricular strain.